available and always accommodating. I don't think I've once heard the word no since <laughs> I've been here. And you know how extraordinary that is? <laughs> Usually hear lots of no's in life. And I don't think I've heard it once in the entire time I've been here. So I thank you for your kindness and for creating such a magnificent space mm -hmm. for artists. Um, so I came with, um, I proposed a um, project had to do with, with um, my interest in history and contemporary, kind of that, that relationship between the past and the present. Um, and I had certain ideas about that, but I left myself open, and little did I know that my room <laughs> would be the major <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> And had I been in a different room, all my artwork would have been different from this, this day. So this gives you an idea of the wall. Um, it's about what, 15 feet high or so, maybe more. Yeah. You know, it's expansive and it's huge. It's the whole front porch of the church over the, the area that's over the front porch of the church. So it's an enormous space. And I was immediately struck by the fact that it's from 948. Mima told me that the yeah. first time yeah. we walked in. Um, I don't get to experience something of that age very often. And you just think about what the world was like you know, at that time compared to where we are now. So I got very interested in the wall, in its history, and its textures. And I also started to get interested in and kind of the design elements that were just embedded. It looks so random, but yet the wall stands up. You know, this, this is what's, I think, particularly interesting to me. The solidity of it, it started to play into my thoughts about stability and equanimity and solidity over time. Um, it was emblematic, and of course, all over Tuscany, you see the use of stone, that material. It's a natural material um, that creates these solid, solid uh, buildings. Um, so this is a general view of the wall. And then just a few samplings, because I did a lot of, maybe that doesn't work. Let's see, maybe I have to be closer. There we go. Um, you'll see, actually, it's, they're not quite in sequence, but um, there's an arch in the wall where there must have been a window or a doorway. I don't know what that was, a window, yeah. and. Um, this is just, I, I thought to myself, this would be a beautiful abstract design, you know, in and of itself. You know, the, the elements are so wonderful, the, the angles, the composition is beautiful. So I wound up shooting a lot of sub-images of the wall in order to capture these abstract uh, compositions. Over here again. There's another one. Again, you know, the movement of the little bricks that are kind of packed in there that kind of move along. Um, so this would be like just a segment of the general wall, and you saw the arch shape. And you'll see, um, yeah, that's one that I really like, that little kind of, it's almost like a, I don't know, it's like a little, little sculpture embedded into the wall. Uh, compositionally. And of course, depending upon the lighting and depending upon where you start and where you end, you can use the same elements and just reconfigure it. There's like unlimited number of, of designs that are actually part of the wall. Uh, oops, well, uh, I'll go back. Here's the arch. So you can see that just a, a general free flowing shape. And again, the one I did was I just segmented part of the arch, you know, for, for design. And go back. Yeah, this one, this was so interesting. I think it's upside down, <laughs> but who, who cares, right? Um, but this is just a close-up of this fissure, this, this break in the, uh, in the wall, you know, so um, this is just a sampling. I, I took a lot of photos, um, and they inspired me on a number of levels. Some of them uh, were successful, some of them were not particularly successful. Uh, so I'll show you some of, of the work that emerged out of that. But my first experience, I'll show you that first. I guess I guess we're done with the slides. Yeah, yeah. we're done with that. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So I'll put this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah.
Sì. A sampling of of textures I could find in different places, um, from the wrought iron railing of uh, the stair around the stairs. This is actually part of that rubbings from that. Just the kind of stuccoy concrete to some of the stones. This says 1668. It's above the fireplace in our living room. Um, this is the flooring from. Um, I don't know if it was in the church, but a variety of things. And I had another one, whatever it is, where I did some other rubbings from uh, things in the church. I also did, this is not complete, I don't know if I'll, I might take it home and do something with it, but this is the, this is the drum on the uh, wine press, was that the, the mill? Was it a wine press? Wine press. Wine press, yeah. So this, this made a beautiful texture, you know? uh, and there's these patterns are all around us all the time, and oftentimes we just, we just don't see them. So I had another big sheet where I had a, a range of them, and what that did for me was give me kind of almost like a little dictionary of um, textures in case I wanted to include them in things. So as I was preparing drawings, it was like, oh, which, which texture do I want to move into? So the other thing that influenced me at, at the same time was my walks up the road. And I saw the shrine. That's the first shrine on the left-hand side. And um, I was very taken by how you go all over Italy and you have images of the mother and child. And there's this state, again, of equanimity, of calm. There's, there's no upset to that image. And I thought that's a very powerful image to keep putting out there over and over and over again. So what I wound up doing was combining several elements in this drawing, which is kind of a complementary drawing to another piece that I, I did a while back and is sold, um, which was called Mental Hostage. And it was really about kind of the furies of the mind, so to speak. Yeah. And, oops, I really taped it up. Sorry, I have to do this because otherwise the graphite smears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really messy stuff. So I can uncase it. Um, so, what I had going here was uh, rubbing the. Um, stones in my room. So that's what this area is here. The shape, the general shape, the kind of gothic arch is also what the Madonna is on. It's a terracotta yeah. piece that's set back into the, uh, the shrine. And of course the gothic arch has this upward lift to it. You know, it, it, it brings your, your thoughts, you know, high, brings them high. This area here is actually a rubbing from the church from the confessional screen between the confessor and the confessional. So it struck me that a lot of people's cares and woes and whatever had, had gone through that, you know, as because it's kind of an open, permeable thing. And then this is, of course, just the, the head of the, uh, the terracotta. And I left it somewhat rough because it's meant to be terracotta and not a real person. 
And then instead of just keeping the traditional halo, because I kept going up and down the road, and the olive leaves are so beautiful, uh, and they're so symbolic for peace and equanimity, and um, it's very historic. You know, it goes all the way back to Noah with the dove bringing the, the olive branch. It goes back to the Greeks and the Romans, who this would be a symbol of, um, say, in, in the uh, Greek Olympics. You know, that's what the person won, or even in Roman times, it was a symbol of peace. And I looked it up, and uh, in the 19th century, in the United States, one of the drafts of the uh, United States seal had um, olive branches and one of the eagle's uh, mm. talons, which was interesting. I don't know what's there now, but at any rate, that's, that's what they, they had there. So what this did for me was communicate not just strictly a, kind of a Christian image, but one that just spanned you know, thousands of years and a symbol that related to all people you know, um, throughout time. So that was, that was what this drawing was all about. Yeah. <coughs> the olive leaves took me a tremendously long time. That was really hard. Yeah. Um, then I was interested in just kind of more simple abstract things. And this was, this was a sampling of stones from the wall. And I looked at it and thought, hey, that would be really neat. And I did, they happened to be <laughs> in a row. And I started to work with them. So one of the things, this, this method is called frottage, you know, where you rub things and you get an impression. And uh, one thing that I think is particularly rich about it is that it gives you the, the physical impression of the object itself but it also shows the hand of the artist at the same time. So it's like this, this melding of, of, of these two things. And you don't always know what's going to happen. It's an accidental process. You don't really know precisely what that image is going to look like as you rub it out. And then the other thing is that that invites you to kind of go back into it and pull some of the color out, uh, emphasize some elements, you know, kind of work work these things. So it's not just strictly just the, the rub surface. So this struck me as, as I worked on it is that it was forming some kind of calm, you know, a, a kind of a traditional image of, of course, Greek Roman classicism, but it's got that kind of rough, you know, quality of the stonework uh, in it. So it was evocative of an earlier time. Um, and then, This was, um, I was kind of trading off, um, Priya saw me do this a lot, I was trading off between the more detailed drawing, <laughs> which takes such time and attention and energy, and then this was a, um, you know, area of the wall, and I just worked this one kind of, um, it's almost like play, where you work in and out of it, you decide what's going to be filled in, what isn't, what you might lighten up, um, and it creates an abstract, a nice, I think, abstract piece as a result. Um, I don't do a lot of like real abstract art, but this is like, I thought, really a, a, a fun way to uh, do something. And the textures are just beautiful. You know, the, this is the wall. This is what, what's, what's being communicated there. And so that's a finished version, and then I have a couple of kind of in-process versions that I could share. Um, this is one. So here, I'm channeling Da Vinci. <laughs> because in our stairwell, there's that machine by Da Vinci yeah. with the stone suspended. Yeah. Okay, so the stone is suspended. You see some shadow. I'm not done with any of this. And then I worked with different stones from the wall. And um, rather than having just the straight column or something, I thought it'd be fun to kind of just add a little energy with a diagonal into that. And I don't know where I'm going to go with it, but it's, it's a narrow drawing. You can't see the outlines. Yeah. It's not meant to be full page. It's, it's relatively narrow. So that's still in process. And
but the chair was not the best idea. It's coming in the way. your paper. <laughs> that works really well. So this is an example of kind of a raw version of just starting with the rubbing on the wall and nothing has been worked out or organized with it yet. You know, there's no clear vision as to where I might go with it. But again, it's, it's a lot of accidental process. You just interact back and forth with what you see and then as it changes you interact with that and you make decisions you know in terms of what it's going to be ultimately so it's a really 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 uh, pleasurable process very different from the extremely uh, carefully planned and, and drawn um, and Thank you. Yeah, you said his backing so that the other drawing wouldn't fall off. Thank you. Yeah. So this one is in process also. Uh, but just a little further along than the, the raw version that the other one is. So this one has um, has stones, the stones, and I picked an area of the wall that had this void that would be very hard to, you know, it was set back too much. So I thought I'd like to do something with that void so that there's something that connects them in some way. So I started to work in and develop the connections among the stones, but this is also the door to the uh, church. Yeah. So the connection, of course, is that the stones are the facade of the church, the original facade of the church. And um, this will represent kind of that portal, that entry in. And with a lot of like cathedrals, when you think about cathedrals and churches and everything, the interesting thing there is that the doorways are really portals to that alternate reality that people are seeking, you know? Um, you cross the threshold and then you're in a different place in time, so to speak. And the whole atmosphere contributes to that, that sense of being somewhere else. It's sometimes like when they talk about cathedrals, it's like the ship between the earth and the heavens, you know. So doorways are really important, you know, portals are really important. So that's where I'm going with this. I'll probably, these will probably be finished up at home because I have to pack up tomorrow for shipping them. And then um, just a few other things, quick things here. This is always so cumbersome with all these little pieces of wax paper and all. Um, some experiments, some of which worked, some of which didn't. Oh, that's the unfinished one. This was just a quick. Just a quick rubbing, you know, just a little experiment. So then kind of keeping my strokes in it very, very loose. I'm kind of trying to create a little bit different sensibility, but just kind of playing again with, you know, the graphite. Um, this was a segment of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't really work it out very well, and I'm not a colorist, and um, it's a nice idea. I mean, I'd love to do something that would use some color. I actually have a little bitty one that I had sketched out in my little pad, and this was really pretty good. This, was, this, this turned out pretty well, so I thought there's potential there, but not terrifically successful. So that didn't work all that well. And I tried also, I thought, you know, I love this curvy landscape. And I thought, could I use rubbings to represent the different, like, hills and stuff like that? And I didn't get very far with that one either. So, but, um, and worked out a little bit of colored pencil with olive, olive trees. 
And then a really interesting one came up, and I'm going to do one more of these before I leave, which was I thought of wetting some paper, good, good sturdy paper, and then trying to almost emboss it on, on the wall. So this, I guess I'll bring this down because it gets a little subtle. This is, I'm going to, uh, Carol has lent me some tools actually where um, I might be able to get more pressure into like the nooks and crannies. Um, so uh, it produced kind of a, an embossing and then uh, Tara lent me some graphite powder which is interesting because then it just gets kind of dabbed around on it and it does have a stony sort of look. And then even the back actually is kind of interesting, you know. Yeah. So there's something to develop in that, you know, that might be interesting in all of that. So I think that's, that's, that's it. So thank you for... Thank you.